on a teacher uh-huh. or on your dad or whatever. But and this wasn't to instill fear or to be ultra religious or anything like that. It was basically, but God sees everything. Mm-hmm. And so no matter what you do, I want you to know you always have an audience in him. And and teaching them that was like, and, and I think too, we, we, we were talking at the break. I want to get into coddling kids because when you're seeing, I'm seeing parents, you know, with these bubble wraps around their kids with masks and they mm-hmm. haven't played with kids. They're sitting six feet apart from kids. Their ma- Their faces have been covered from everybody. And I think... Are we really helping them? I think that fear-based living is hurting them because we're not teaching them how to go out into this world, trusting that God has them, mm-hmm. that they have um, a, a divine purpose that God has created them for. They don't have to be scared of every little thing, every little bug, every little germ, and every little painful circumstance. And it doesn't create character to bubble wrap our kids. And I it's, want- it's literally like... Do you never let your kid ride a bike? I mean, they're going to fall. It's inevitable. So because of that fear, are you going to say, well, I think we should just not get on bikes because you could fall and you could get really badly hurt or you could get a teeny tiny scrape. But either way, there's a risk. First of all, don't even get me started on the risk of COVID-19 in kids, but we all know the statistics. But to say, to apply that mentality, okay, the masking mentality, the, the stay home, stay safe mentality, the six feet apart mentality, to apply that train of thought to anything else would be ridiculous right you wouldn't put your kid in the car because you're more likely to get in a car accident than your kid is to contract COVID-19 so you're now talking about a situation where if you applied that thought to everything in everyday life your kid would actually sit in their room in bubble wrap in a fire retardant room with only pillows. Okay, am I sounding crazy? This is called solitary confinement in a prison. <laughs> this That's is called what you would the need mental to do. institution. Yes, this is what you would need to do to protect your child. Uh, that would be the epitome of coddling. And so, no, Brandy, when when we put it in those kind of terms, right? Don't let your kid eat, you know, sushi. There's a risk. Don't let your kid eat at all because they actually could choke. So no food. <laughs> a liquid diet. <laughs> does that sound like the well, most extreme coddling? Yeah, it does. Healthy. But, I, but I also think that parents are coddling out of this idea that it makes them a good parent. Mm. And I don't I'm mean protecting to, my child. And I don't even just mean physical protection. I mean, like, I'm, they, am, they are the center of the universe. I'm going to drive them to 200 sports. They're going to mm. be the best at everything. I'm going to teach them to perform. They're going to get an allowance for nothing. Yeah, they're just going to be performers. They're going to be good at everything. And I think this is comes back to parents, your problem. Like your kids are making up for something that you need to deal with with God because you're there. I see a lot of parents that their kids are so much of a reflection of them It's just not healthy and normal. I think every parent is guilty of either applying the same parental tactics that they were given or going to the extreme opposite and saying, well, my parents did this, so I am not going to do that to my kids. And either way, not having a healthy balance of what should your kids be exposed to that you can educate them on and what should you just keep them from, right? So like my kids know why people wear masks. But they know it because I've told them why people wear masks. And I'm not going to tell them, well, we're not talking about it. Then they're going to be forever confused and curious why some people put faith or face coverings over half their face. So guess what? I've created the knowledge in my kids as to why people are doing that. Mm -hmm. And guess what my kids say? Well, that doesn't make sense. And it doesn't. Mm -hmm. But I'd rather them know the argument, right? And know the common sense behind why we don't wear masks and why we refuse to wear masks than to be confused and unprepared when someone comes at them and says, well, your family should be wearing masks. It's safe. And then they go, oh, well, why is it safe? Well, now they're getting their information from the wrong person because that person is giving them information. So we have to, counteractive to coddling, we have to let our kids be exposed to a little bit because then we can give them the knowledge to combat that. <gasps> yeah. What? Something just, mm. oh, Brandy's eyes just got big. What? Oh, no, because, again, like last night I was with my study and we were talking about, you know, we should be training our children <laughs> to be strong in a really hard world. Mm-hmm. I, I mean, yes. we should be having conversations daily. This should be something we take very serious. Yep. And I don't mean fear monger. I just mean 
look around you. There's a conversation we had all over. I mean, we just literally, we, were, I, I, we started on coddling. I was talking about character, about kids hiding stuff and uh-huh. character, because this is the thing. We coddle them. Are we trying, are we doing what we can to refine their character? Because character, integrity, in a world that will, that is picking truth apart, family apart, deconstructing constitution, um, deconstructing what it means to be male, female, um, right and wrong. You know, we need to be teaching what is right, why it's right, where does the truth come from, and what is most important isn't if they're the number one in the class or the number one athlete. Yes, that's amazing, but it's most important if their character and their integrity, that to me... Yeah, because you can you can trust when they leave your sight, yep. you know, or you you don't have to have one eye open at night. You don't have to when they go off to school, which you guys, to be honest, that's a whole nother thing. I'm gonna have to hit on is sending your kids. We, you off already did. To we did. What did when when did we talk about this? We had a whole indoctrination camp thing, but also something you said, Brandy. You have the two words written down on your paper: coddling and character. If you're coddling your kids, they can't develop character. They're all they're developing is obedience, mm-hmm. right? If you tell them what to do, all they're doing is be- obeying. They're not deciphering for themselves. And our job as parents is to present them with these conflict, conflicted issues and say, here's what the world says. Here's what the media says. Here's what is being presented to you. Here's why, as your mommy, I'm telling you this is inaccurate. And I'm not just telling you as a, as a basis of opinion. Here's the Bible. Let's read about it. Let's read about why God says this isn't okay. Mm-hmm. And everything you teach your kids, like says in, in God's word, you bring it back to that. Then they've got something to reference, not just, well, my mommy says, you know, this is wrong. Or my mommy says this is right. Yeah. Mommy has a basis for her beliefs. Yeah. Yeah. And if we're all of that, I want to kind of amplify the idea that if we're led around by our feelings, like kind of like what you were saying at the beginning of the show. You got sucked down the rabbit hole. Your feelings are affected. Your feelings overflowed Mm -hmm. into the moment, into the weekend, into the Sunday. If we are drug around by our feelings and we're, we are teaching our kids to do the same thing. Exactly. All right. When we get back, we're going to throw in uh, our own little sponsorship. (laughs) Yeah. Stay tuned, guys. Stay tuned for it. It actually is exciting because you guys get discounts. This is actually a big deal. And we've never announced this yet. We haven't announced the sponsorship yet. Oh, everybody, don't hold your breath. Hold your breath. Hold your breath. (laughs) Not if you're driving. All right, guys, we're back. If you've been holding your breath, I hope you haven't passed out. We're back with the She's So Right show. This is Brandy Barkley with my co-host, the fabulous Lindsey Graham. We're talking today about raising conservative kids, or like how I like to say it, raising kids with a moral compass. You didn't say the and, blue joke. And No, I did. Oh, no, I you did. didn't say blue. Oh, you I did. Say oh, blue. well, you know, oh, I was oh saying, did you pass out? This Are you blue? Ruined. Cut, <laughs> cut. <laughs> and then okay. I was going to say. And here you go. <laughs> speaking of blue, <laughs> not only is it my favorite color in the American flag, it's the color of the logo of our newest sponsor, who we have yet to announce. We're so excited. But we are proud affiliates for My Pillow. We're My yes, Pillow right. ambassadors, whoop, whoop, whoop. you guys. We got to support Mike Lindell. He's Dude. doing so much good stuff. That guy is my hero, Mike. If you're listening, that's right. If you're listening on Sunday at three o'clock to the <laughs> Patriot in Arizona, you're my hero. Um, but yeah, we're affiliates now, so you guys can save fifty percent on all My Pillow products on their website, MyPillow.com, and our code. If you can remember it, so easy, so right. Yep. So no, mypillow.com no slash spaces, so right. no capitals, just so right. You say fifty so percent right. and you guys honest to God. I had no idea how much good stuff they had on there. They have I'm obsessed with the memory foam moccasins. I'm sorry, I can't stop talking about them. They're okay. just fabulous. I have anyway, to, moving I have to on. Say, no, I have to say my favorite thing because it's uh, applicable to this conversation. Oh. I bought these for Christmas. They have um my pillow um covers that are Bible stories. So it's like a picture of Noah's Ark. Oh. 
Oh. And then the, one of the scriptures from Noah's Ark, and it's like colorful and pretty. So I got them for each one of my okay. three kids. And, Isn't that adorable? And they ha- yes, and they have the matching little bitty pillows Terrible. with Bible stories. Uh-huh. You guys, those are such great gifts for little kids. Yep, so cute. So yeah. and then they go to sleep with little Jesus every night. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I think it's precious. Oh, my gosh. Okay, so we're back with the topic being, I, I, I found this when I sat down to record this show because that's how God is. He's like, don't forget to read this one. <laughs> but in Second Peter, <clears throat> if this is a long one, but just bear with me. Uh, chapter 2, there were also false prophets among the people, just as there will be false teachers among you. They will secretly introduce destructive heresies, even denying the sovereign Lord who bought them, bringing swift destruction on themselves. Many will follow their shameful ways and will bring the way of truth into disrepute. In their greed, these teachers will exploit you with stories they have made up. Guys, we have to be teachers for our kids. We have to because not only are we the ones spending most of our most of the time with them, not only are we ordained for this role by God, but there are people outside of your your family in schools in businesses that are going to be false prophets and are going to teach your kids wrong. They're going to Mm -hmm. try to indoctrinate. I mean, this is silly, right? You already know this. The media, the news. um, Teachers. Teachers, public schools. I don't want to rip on all teachers, but I mean, it's a thing. It's everywhere. Advertisements, bulletins. Oh my gosh, Disney Channel. I mean, makeup commercials. I mean, you've got, you know, eighth grade girls now that are interested in makeup commercials and they're They're getting instructed by transgender males. Yes. Yep. Absolutely. And the only way to combat that other than what Brandy was saying, coddling them. Oh, no TV. You know, no Netflix. I mean, yes, this is this is a step that I'm actually considering taking is canceling Netflix completely forever because that is a way that I have to combat this. But you've got to teach them what's right so that when they see what's wrong, they already know Mm -hmm. they're not allowing their brain to say oh i see that it's okay if i'm a boy that i can change into a girl that's that's not real and you've got to be the parent that teaches them biblically why it's not well and it was interesting i was listening to i love dennis prager you guys i mean those are great videos such great videos to watch to just learn how to have these conversations um the the prager you videos but i loved one of them that uh dennis said being sophisticated in our case for Christ and having a good argument rather than just saying, do it because I said, or you're doomed to hell if you don't. I mean, you if we want to really ruin, <laughs> like, <laughs> like torture our kids, you know, do it my way or you're going to hell. Right. Like, no. no, we have to have not only, again, being different, having joy, having peace, having love, having strength, having fruit of the spirit. Like Lindsay said, she went home after having being in a bad mood and going to church, and she apologized to her kids. How many of us can, you know, I did that with my kids, you know, showing them it's okay to be a human being. We're not ever asking perf- perf- for perfection. If we need, we're, perf- we're, we're perfect. My gosh, I can't even. <laughs> <laughs> coffee, coffee, coffee. coffee. <laughs> Too much. Um, if we were perfect, we wouldn't need a perfect savior. So. But I think just making the case for how this is a better way to live, you know, and not just saying do as I say, just because we have to make the case for Christ. We have to make the case for traditional values. And how do we do that? We get our heads out of our phone and we do not let the left impede in our house, in our spirit, because what's in us will overflow onto our munchkins. Guys, you're listening to the She's So Right Show, available on all podcast platforms, She's So Right Show. We're going to take a break. We'll be right back, and we're going to talk about something Brandy just said about your kids being little tiny Christians. (laughs) Little tiny Little tiny baby Christians. Hey guys, welcome back to the She's So Right show. You're listening to Brandy Barclay and Lindsey Graham. We think we're hilarious. If you're going to miss part of the show, we are available on all podcast platforms, She's So Right show. Joining us today, you're going to hear a conversation about raising conservative kids. We've covered topics that we didn't even know we were going to cover because once we start talking, God sort of leads the conversation. And something Brandy said before the break got me thinking a lot of parents think that they have to kind of control um, the narrative and the teaching in their home. 
But what we don't realize is that when they're young and you're bringing them up in a Christian household, you're introducing your child to God. And if you're introducing your child to a real and true relationship with 